Obviously you guys can see that I love books and I just can't help it like how much I love books and so with that I'm always looking for new releases to see what's coming out, who's writing what and I'm always just like keeping up to date on that. So I figured I would share 12 favorite new releases that are like coming out and I cannot wait to share these because I feel like some of these have not really been talked about with like literally anyone. There's going to be lots of diverse reads, also maybe some you've heard of before and if you haven't there will be some Something that you'll be probably really excited about so make sure you guys subscribe because there's new videos every single day for the entire month of October for October I think this is I don't know we're going on like we're in week two now so like we're we're rolling <laughs> I'm really having so much fun so again make sure you guys subscribe and let's get into the video some of these books that I share are actually coming out like next month and like this year and then some are coming out next year I wanted to make sure to include a lot of diverse reads and I feel like sometimes people like miss out on those books in these videos and some of those books aren't being released until next year so we're just like adding in all the ones that are on my list some of them I've already purchased because I can't I cannot wait for them to come and then some of them I'm waiting until they have like signed copies where you can like purchase on the pre-release, what's it called, pre-sale. Um, the first book that I'm really excited about is A Love Song for Ricky Wilde. This is by Tia Williams. She wrote uh, Seven Days in June and that book is so, so good. She also wrote another book that was actually turned into a movie. I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix. Um, I haven't read it yet, but I wanna say it's on my TBR. I know it's like a yellow book. I cannot remember the title, I literally. It's called The Perfect Find. <laughs> I haven't read that one yet, but it actually was turned into a movie on Netflix and I'm really excited to read that one. But this one, the cover of this one literally has me shook. It looks so good. It says, leap years are strange enchantment time and for some, even a single February can be life changing. And again, this does come out actually in February. It comes out on February 6th. So I feel like this is kind of cool. The timeline like coincides with when the book comes out. Ricky Wild has many talents, but being a wild isn't one of them. As the impulsive artistic daughter of a powerful Atlanta dynasty, she's the opposite of her famous socialite sisters. Where their long stemmed roses, where their long stemmed roses, she's a dandelion, an adorable bloom that's actually a weed, born to float wherever the wind blows. In her bones, Ricky knows that somewhere a different, more exciting life awaits her. When Regal non Gagarian Miss Della invites her to rent the bottom floor of her Harman Harlem brownstone. Ricky jumps at the chance for a fresh beginning. She leaves behind her family, wealth, and chaotic romantic decisions to realize her dream of opening a flower shop. And just beneath the surface of her new neighborhood, the music, stories, and dazzling drama of the Harlem Renaissance still simmers. One evening in February, as the heady, curiously off-season scent of night-blooming jasmine fills the air, Ricky encounters a handsome, deeply mysterious stranger who knocks her world off balance in the most unexpected way. Set against the backdrop of modern Harlem and Renaissance glamour, a love song for Ricky Wilde is a swoon-worthy love story of two passionate artists drawn to, ma to magic, romance, and the opportunity of New York and whose lives are uniquely and irreversibly linked. This just looks so good. I'm really excited for this one. I love Seven Days in June, so I feel like I'll really like this one too. If Only I Had Told Her by Laura Nolan is a book I literally have not just like stopped thinking about because I read If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan and If Only I Had Heard, If I Had Told Her is from Finn's point of view. So it's like the same book, but just two different points of view is from the guy's point of view. I cannot wait to read this. This was actually supposed to be released like in November, I'm pretty sure, or December, but she actually ended up pushing the date back. And so now it's gonna be released in February, but again, still so excited for this one. And it says, if only I had told her that I loved her years ago, then I wouldn't be here now. Finn has always loved Autumn. She's not just the girl next door or his mother's best friend's daughter. She is everything but she's not his girlfriend. That's Sylvie and Finn would never hurt her so there's no way Autumn could know how he truly feels. Jack, Finn's best friend, isn't so sure. He's seen Finn and Autumn together. How could she not know? And how is he supposed to support and protect Finn when heartache seems inevitable? Autumn surrounds herself with books and wants to write her own destiny, but one doesn't always get a new chapter and fate can be cruel to those in love. 
Told through three different perspectives, if only I had told her is a love story brimming with truth, tragedy, and the unexpected bonds that heal us. Now this book was a five star book for me and I only have very few five star books. So read If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan. It is so good and it'll get you ready for when the release comes out for If Only I Had Told Her in February. February must be a really like, I don't know, popular time to release books because this is another book that comes out in February. It comes out February 27th and it is by Christina Forrest. It's called The Partner Plot. I love Christina Forrest books. I read I Want to Be Where You Are recently by her. I've also read The Neighbor Favorite by her. Both of those books were so cute. They give those happy, fluffy, easy read vibes, which I really enjoyed. And this book says, two former high school sweethearts get a second chance in their marriage of convenience romance by Christina Forrest. To Violet Green, fashion is everything. As a successful celebrity stylist, she travels all over the world living out her dreams. Professionally, she's thriving, but her personal life is in shambles. After surviving a very public breakup with her ex-fiance six months ago, Violet is now determined to focus on her career. But life hands her something, or rather someone, that might derail everything. Xavier Wright did not expect to run into his high school girlfriend, Violet, the girl he once thought he'd marry on a birthday trip to Vegas. As a high school teacher and basketball coach, he rarely leaves his New Jersey hometown, so what were the chances? But when the initial shock wears off, they decide to celebrate together. They feel, feel young and reckless as they party the night away, reckless and reckless they clearly were when the following morning they wake up beside each other with rings on their fingers. Their impulsive nuptials might be a blessing in disguise though when they realize that both of their careers could benefit from the marriage. So they play the part of a blissfully wedded couple. Yet when their passion comes hurling back, they realize their feelings are just as real as, as they were back when they were teens, but are their lives too different to stick it through or will they finally get a happy ending? This one looks so freaking good. I cannot wait for this one. Also the cover of this one, beautiful. Anything that's like pink and bright, I feel like it's perfect for Valentine's Day and people are gonna be obsessed with the cover. This next book I cannot wait for and it's actually by Lynn Painter who wrote Better Than The Movies and I love that book and she also wrote I want to say it's called The Do-Over and that came out like Valentine's Day. Love that book as well. She does happy, fluffy, easy reads so well and she also doesn't put like any spice in her books, which is nice. This book is called Betting on You and it comes out November 28th of this year. Cannot wait. And on the little like blurb, it says that when 17 year old Bailey starts a new job at a hotel water park, she is less than thrilled to see an old acquaintance is one of her coworkers. Bailey met Charlie a year ago on the long flight to Omaha where she moved after her parents' divorce. Charlie's cynicism didn't mix well with Bailey's carefully well-behaved temperament and his endless commentary was the irritating cherry on top of an already emotionally fraught trip. Now, Bailey and Charlie are still polar opposites, but instead of everything about him rubbing Bailey the wrong way, she starts to look forward to hanging out and gossiping with the water park guests and their coworkers, particularly two who keep flirting with each other. Bailey and Charlie make a bet on whether or not the cozy pair will actually get together. Charlie insists that members of the opposite sex can't just be friends and Bailey is determined to prove him wrong. Bailey and Charlie keep a close track of the romantic progress of others while Charlie works to deflect the growing feelings he's developed for Bailey. Terrified to lose her if his crush becomes known, what doesn't help his agenda is Bailey and Charlie fake dating in order to disrupt the annoying pest pleasantries between Bailey's mom and her mom's new boyfriend. Soon what Charlie was hoping to avoid becomes a reality as Bailey starts to see him as not only a friend she can rely on in the midst of family drama, but someone who can make her hands shake and her heart race. But Charlie has a secret, a secret that involves Bailey and another bet Charlie may have made. Can the two make a real go of things or has Charlie's secret doomed them before they start? This looks so good. Her books always give rom-com vibes, like the best rom-com vibes, like Hallmark movie vibes, happy, fluffy, easy. Like, I love her books. Literally could eat them up. Just cobble them right up. I don't think I can see a theme here, but there are so many happy, fluffy, easy reads. Like, this is my favorite type of, like, genre for the most part. Like, I just love a happy, fluffy romance. It makes me so happy. And the book that I'm excited about that's a new release that's coming out is Game On by Cerecia Glass. She wrote The Love Con, Love Con, and I really liked that book, and so I really am excited for this one. This one actually comes out December 12th of 2023, so it's coming out very soon this year. And this one just looked like another 
fluffy one. It says, when an unexpected player two enters her life, a gamer must decide if their relationship is worth leveling up in this new romance from the author of The Love Con. Samara Reynolds has built a large following as a gamer under an anonymous screen name and uses her skills as a DEIA consultant to advocate for equal representation in video games. When she posted a video critiquing the popular game Legends Fall, she knew she'd get a reaction from her fans, but the video leads to hundreds of female gamers critiquing the game and its company, Artemis Games. The only thing more unexpected than starting an online movement is getting a job offer from the handsome CEO of Artemis. Uh, Aaron Gal Galanis has been on a mission to get his company certified to create gaming content for people with disabilities. When he sees Artemis trending online for all the wrong reasons, he's determined to right his wrongs and offer the originator of Mia, Mia Culpa, as well as a job offer to overhaul the character options in Legends Fall. Working together, turns Aaron and Samara from adversaries to allies, allies into friends, and after that something more. But once their relationship goes public, will Aaron and Samara be able to weather the storm and fight for their happy ending or is it game over? Cute, 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 fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. I'm so excited for this one. I loved the Dreamland Billionaire series. Literally loved it so much. And I think I loved it because Lauren Asher does such a great job of having a ton of dialogue in her books. So she's coming out with book one of the Lakefront Billionaire series. And book one is called Love Redesigned. And that comes out November 7th, 2023. I've already pre-ordered this one because I feel like I'm going to really like this series. Honestly, anything that's like intertwined with billionaires and like has a lot of dialogue, I'll probably love it. And this says, Julian, if I ever caught on fire, Dahlia Munoz would fan the flames with a smile. So when she returns to Lake Wisteria, I fully intend to avoid the interior designer, at least until my meddling mother exploits my savior complex. The faster I help Dahlia find her creative spark, the sooner she will leave town. But while I was busy getting rid of Dahlia, I overlooked one potential issue. What happens if I want her to stay? And then this is like Dahlia saying this. Dahlia, people say the devil has many faces, but I know only one, Julian Lopez, my childhood rival and family friend of me. I vow to steer clear of him while recovering from my broken engagement, but then the billionaires make an irresistible offer. Renovate a historic house together and triple our profits. Our temporary truce becomes compromised as we face years worth of denied attraction and mixed emotions. Giving into our desire is inevitable, but falling in love, that isn't part of the plan. Woo, that looks good. I love a billionaire's romance. They're always just so fun to read. This Could Be Us by Candy Ryan is a book that I think is one of my most anticipated new releases. It comes out March 5th of 2024. And I loved Before I Let Go by her. It was a five star read for me. So I feel like this book will be as well. Her writing is just so freaking good. She's one of my favorite authors. And this book literally is, I think, the story that I'm like most excited about. I knew she was gonna write about like the friend group and there were two friends in Before I Let Go and this is the friend that I was like most excited to read about. It's Soledad's story and it says Soledad Barnes has her life all planned out because of course she does. She plans everything, she designs everything, she fixes everything. She's a domestic goddess who's never met a party she couldn't host or a charge she couldn't lead. The one with all the answers and the perfect vinaigrette for that summer salad, but none of her very talents can save her from a catas catastrophe, when catastrophe strikes and the life she built with a man who is supposed to be her forever goes poof into a cloud of betrayal and delusion. But there's no time to pout or sulk or even groove, grieve that life she lost. She's too busy keeping a roof over her daughter's head and food on the table. And in the process of saving them all, Soledad rediscovers herself from the ashes of a life burned to the ground. Something bold and new can rise. But then an unlikely man enters the picture. The forbidden one, the one she shouldn't want, but can't seem to resist. She's lost it all before, refuses to repeat her mistakes. Can she trust him? Can she trust herself after all she has lost and found? Can she be brave enough to make room for what could be? <sighs> Y'all, this looks so good. I also read an excerpt of this. It was in Cosmo Magazine. I will link it below if you guys wanna read it. I am just itching to read this book. I am, I cannot wait. Heartstopper 5 is a book I need injected into my veins. Like I love Heartstopper, the entire series. I have not watched the show yet. Comment below if you guys liked it, but the series, 
is so good like i not i'm not even like a graphic novel type of girl and this really got me into reading graphic novels um the fifth book actually comes out december 19th of this year and it looks so incredible it's by alice oseman on the little blurb it says nick and charlie are very much in love they fully finally said those three little words and charlie has almost persuaded his mom to let him sleep over at nick's house but when nick with Nick going off to university next year is everything about to change. By Alice Oseman, winner of the YA Book Prize, Heartstopper encompasses all the small moments of Nick and Charlie's lives that together make up something larger, which speaks to all of us. Oh, their love story is so beautiful. I didn't realize that this was on Netflix. It says that it's an acclaimed live action Netflix series. I, I think for some reason I thought it was like Hulu or something. I don't know. I will definitely have to check it out. It looks like it would be really good because I've heard from a lot of people that it's similar to the books. Um, and I love books that are made into movies. This year I read The Way I Used To Be and I really loved it. It's by Amber Smith. I feel like it was such a hard book to read and I feel like the second book that's coming out it actually comes out November 7th of this year. It's called The Way I Am Now. I feel like it'll be a really good take on like where she is after everything that happened. And the part of the book, like the blurb, it says, Eden and Josh decide to give their relationship another chance in this much anticipated sequel to The Way I Used To Be that explores how to move forward after trauma in life and in love. Eden and Josh never had a fair shot at a healthy relationship. When they dated in high school, they each had their own problems getting in the way of the deep connection they felt toward one another. Unbeknownst to Josh, Eden was carrying the burden of a devastating SA, while Josh was dealing with his own private struggle of having an alcoholic father. Months after Eden and two other girls publicly accuse the R word, I don't wanna like, I don't wanna trigger anyone in like these videos, so I always try to like use acronyms, but you can easily go and like look up what the little blurb says. Eden is starting college while her case goes to trial. Now when she and Josh reconnect, it seems like it might finally be in the right place at the right time for them to make it work. But is their love strong enough to withstand the challenges and chaos of college and the crushing realities of a trial that will determine whether Eden gets the justice she deserves? This looks so good. I was wanting both Eden and Josh to get together like so bad in the first book. And if you haven't read the first book, like you just really need to read it. It was a really good book. Definitely check the trigger warnings, but I feel like this one will be a good second book. It sounds like it's more of like a, like she's definitely going through hard things, but it shows like how she's maybe growing from those things, which can, I don't know, be really maybe inspiring to someone who's reading the books. But this one comes out November 7th, which is so soon. I need to like get on ordering these books because I haven't even ordered these and I'm shook by how many are coming out like this year. And for some reason I thought they were next year. This one looks so good. So the cover of this book was literally just released like a couple days ago. It's by Daniel Allen. It's called Curvy Girl Summer. Now I read Continuum by Daniel Allen and it was such a good book, mostly because it is quick, like quick to the point. There's so much dialogue that you like literally won't want to put it down. And this book comes out June 11th of next year. Um, but I had to add it because her writing is so good. Um, it says that Bridget Jones meets Insecure in Curvy Girl Summer, a smoking hot, hilarious novel about the perils of online dating. Aaliyah is determined to celebrate her 30th birthday with a boyfriend, and after a failed blind date, the local bartender, Ahmed, suggests she joins a dating app. Filled with lies, catfish, and fetishizing, the wild world of online dating makes Aaliyah think she's in over her head. And she is, but with her two best friends and a protective bartender by her side, what could go wrong? Everything. Everything could go wrong. And that's the problem because as Aaliyah is set on finding exactly what she looks for, she ends up finding something she never expects. This looks so cute. And the cover of this, I feel like it's so unique. Like it's cartoony, but like it has a cool look to it. I don't know. I This is something I'm like really excited about. Definitely top of the list out of all of these new releases for sure. You guys all know that the Magnolia Park series is a five star series for me. I read Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hates and those are both 4.5 star books. And then I read The Great Undoing and The Long Way Home and those were both five star books for me. So overall, a five star series. Love the whole series. And Jessa Hastings, who's the author of that series is coming out with a book called Never. Now it's supposed to be a like Peter Pan retelling and you guys know I do not read like fantasy. I'm not really into like 
I don't know, magical realism or anything like that. But for Jessa, I will read anything. I will literally read her like sticky notes, her grocery list, like anything. And so this book actually comes out December 5th, 2023. It's called Never. And she doesn't really have anything like at all on the book. It says, second star to the right and straight on to morning, a fairy tale retelling like no other from the imagination of Jessa Hastings. I think she actually posted the back of the book on, I wanna say on Instagram. So I'm gonna pull that up because if she posted that, like I definitely wanna read that. And I think she did. She also I think is making this into a series, like a full series. And I feel like that would be really fun. Okay, she actually did not post like the back of the book. Um, so it must just be a surprise. I cannot wait. Like literally, this is gonna be so good. It will be like my first true fantasy. Um, so I feel like it's gonna be something that I'm going to enjoy. I could have sworn I read the back of this book somewhere. Like maybe she took it down or Maybe I never saw it, I don't know. But it looked like it was really good and I can't wait to read this one because anything she writes always hooks me in and I feel like this will be a really good one. The last book I'm going to share is A Thousand Broken Pieces by Tilly Cole. Now this book is the second book to A Thousand Boy Kisses. I'm not gonna read the blurb because I do not wanna give it away for anyone who, like I don't wanna give book one away for anyone who has not read that, but please read it. It is so good, so heartfelt, so heart-wrenching, it is incredible but this is actually about Savannah Litchfield who I think is the sister of Poppy and it looks like it's such a good it's it looks like it's such a good book um, I'm gonna read like the bottom of it it says as Kale and Savannah embark on a journey of healing they learn to find solace together together discovering a glimmer of light only the other can bring and the harder they fall the more they heal the fractured fragments of their hearts piece by broken piece so yeah this looks like a good one Again, it's about Poppy's sister, and now she's 17, and I don't know, I just feel like it will be um, a really good one. It says that Kale Woods, it's I think the love interest for her, it says that one year after losing his older brother, the person who meant the world to him, his life has spiraled into a heavy void of nothing. Once the most promising hockey player in the junior league, Kale can no longer step onto the ice without being paralyzed by memories of his brother. When his parents sign him up for a trip abroad for grieving teens, no part of him wants to go, but he does. So it shows like both of their stories separate and then it shows them like meeting and stuff and together and I don't know, it just looks really good. But it comes out June 25th of next year and I'm really excited for this one because I loved A Thousand Boy Kisses. It was so cute. And that is all the new releases that I'm really excited about. I will share more of these videos if you guys want to see them. I feel like there are so many new releases coming out and I was thinking this the other day, I'm like, were books this like, quick when I was younger like I feel like they were not this fast like I cannot keep up and I like read pretty quick but literally books come out faster than I can even keep up with which is exciting because that means there's always going to be good books coming and there's always going to be good things to read so again if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe because there's new videos every single day for the entire month of October and tomorrow you guys are going to be getting a video where I like have a blind date with a book I ordered a book from the Rip Bodice and I'm going to actually like open the package and then see what book they sent me and read that. I have no idea what the book is. They have like a little section on their website where you can like pick a random book. So hopefully you guys like that video and I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next one. Bye guys.